Hello, I am Jefferson Vita Jr., manager of the Siemens Building Products Technical Department Hub for Latin America. I would like to share with you another video of the Tech Tip series regarding our product lines for fire detection and alarm and building automation systems. Make sure to subscribe to my channel. And please don't forget to hit that like button. Today I am going to talk about the Cerberus Pro Compact FC922 and FC924 fire alarm control panels. How do I configure my remote enunciator in the Cerberus Pro Compact system? How do I configure its switches? LEDs? These questions have come up many times during my time in the Siemens BP technical department. In this video in my tech tip series, I discuss these and other configuration possibilities of the FT2014 and FT2015 remote enunciators. I cover installation, visibilities, switch, and LED setups with access level control. Let's take a look. Let's look at the components we will use for this setup. First, we need two short cables. One for the serial communication between panel and remote enunciator, FT2015 for short, and one for the FT2015 24 volts power, which will be provided by the panel. Next, we will use a FCA2016 module, which is a RS485 communications module. Don't forget to keep the bag with both fixating screws for the FCA2016. Many people don't account for this bag and end up throwing it out with other boxes at the job site. Also, you will need a 120 ohms resistor to monitor the communication between the panel and the FT2015. Finally, we will need a remote enunciator. The Cerberus Pro Compact system has two remote enunciators available, with and without control. FT2014 and FT2015 respectively. In this video, we will use the FT2015. Please take note of this important step. Make sure to always power down the system before you install any modules on the panel. You should remove the secondary power first, usually batteries, and then primary power. Later, to power the system back up, repeat the procedure in reverse order, primary power, and then, secondary power. Now, let's look at the FT2015 installation sheet for the connections and dip switch settings of the enunciator. This manual can be found on the help menu of the software. All manuals are automatically included in the FXS7212 software's help menu. Look under mounting slash installation slash product data and then look for the remote display FT2014 and remote terminal FT2015 manual. Let's first go into the adjustment elements so we can check out the address and the baud rate settings. They will have to match with the settings programmed later in the software which will be shown in part 2 of this video. As you can see, switches 1 to 4 are for the address settings and switches 5 and 6 are for the baud rate settings. Let's ignore the remaining switches at this time since we will not need to adjust them for this task. You can set the FT2015 address from 1 to 15. I decided to set mine to 1. To do this, I have to set switch 1 to on and switches 2 to 4 to off. Next, we have to set the baud rate. Again, we will have to match whatever we set here to the settings in the software later as well. I will set mine to 19200 by setting switch 5 to on and switch 6 to off. Now, let's look at the connections for power and data. Look for the class B setup, as this is how the FT2015 will be connected to the panel. As you can see, we can use the IN connector in the FT2015. Pins 1 and 2 are for 24 VDC power, positive and negative respectively. Pins 3 and 4 are for the data connections. Make sure to match A to A and B to B later when you connect it to the RS485 module. And finally, the 120 ohms resistor is connected across pins 3 and 4 to monitor the communication between the FT2015 and the fire alarm panel. Now, let's make it happen. Let's start by setting the dip switch settings in the FT2015 as described earlier in this video. First, let's set the address to 1. Then, let's set the baud rate to 19200. Next, let's connect the data and power cables on the FT2015. First, I will connect the communication and power cables on the FT2015. Also, I will connect the 120 ohms resistor to the top two pins of the N connector. This connector is labeled B, A, negative, and positive from top to bottom. It is important to take note of this as we will need to connect accordingly to the panel now, with my panel powered down, 
I will install the RS-485 module behind the PMI. We have two available slots for RS-485 modules. I will install mine on the left slot. This slot is referred to as SER OPT-1. And here is what the RS-485 module, FCA 2016, looks like after being installed. Make sure to fasten both screws that comes with the module so that it is secure in its place. Now that all connections on the FT2015 have been completed, let's connect the cables on the panel side. First, let's connect the communication cable on the RS-485 module as per the manual. It is easier to connect the wires to the RS-485 connector if you remove the connector from the module, wire it, and put it back in. And finally, let's connect to the 24VDC auxiliary power connector in the periphery board inside the panel. Again, it is easier if you remove the power connector from the panel, wire it, and connect it back. Now, we are able to power the system back up. Since we have not programmed the FT2015 in the panel's configuration, the communication will not close, for now. You can verify this by looking at the gears on the FT2015 display. The panel will also indicate a fault. This is it for part 1 of this video. Make sure to check part 2 for the programming of the FT2015 in the configuration software FXS7212. See you soon!